Vlog. Today, we are going to talk all about damsels. Now, when I say damsels, I'm also going to include clownfish. Now, before you say, wait, Hillary, clownfish and damsels are two separate types of fish. Actually, they're not. So if you look back at the different families, Palmacentridae is a type of fin rayed fish. It's a family of fish, and it includes both clownfish and damsels, which is why I'm lumping both of these guys together in one video. Now, here's the thing. There's a bunch of different kinds of damsels out there, and there's a whole bunch of different kinds of clownfish. They come in a variety of designer patterns and colors and, you know, even shapes. It just, there's more and more every day. So I'm going to try and keep it relatively basic and break it down into um, the three different species of clownfish that are on the market that are really popular for hobbyists. And I'm going to break it down into some of the most common damsels that you're going to see in your local fish store. So let's go ahead and get started with those damsels. So first off is going to be our blue damsel. They're pretty common, standard fish, beautiful blue color. Um, you can have them by themselves, you can add them in groups. Um, they add a lot of color and a lot of flow to your tank. One of the next common species of damsels that you'll see in local fish stores is chromis. Now you can find them as green chromis, blue chromis, blue green chromis. A lot of times um, those names depend on where they're coming from, if they're going to be from Fiji or somewhere else in the wild, that's where they get their names from. But beautiful, beautiful blue, blue green fish, just, just so much color. Next is going to be our yellow tail damsel. That's another one that I see quite frequently. It's got that same beautiful royal blue body with a bright yellow tail. Um, those, are, those are pretty popular among hobbyists. Next is the domino damsel. Now, I don't see them quite as frequently, but I would say that they're one of the larger species of damsels that are out there that occasionally do get put in tanks. Now, I will warn you, some species of damsels, including some of the ones that I haven't talked about today, can get very feisty and very aggressive. So do your research before you buy or add any fish to your tank. I know people that have added domino damsels to their tank and have had a heck of a time getting them out. So use caution before adding anything. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our clownfish. So there's three different species of clownfish. There's more than three that are out on the market, but the three most prevalent there are going to be the percula, the ocellaris, and the bisinculatus. Like I said, there's some other ones out there, so don't, please don't be upset if I've forgotten your favorite type of clownfish. The percula and the ocellaris look very similar, but there's a couple differences that you can look at to tell them apart. So ocellaris are sometimes called the false percula, but if you look at the percula, they're going to have a little bit more oranger eyes versus the ocellaris that will have slightly redder eyes. Now, another thing you can look at if you are looking at their patterns on their body, the percula are going to have their, the black lines on them are going to be just a little bit thicker than you would find on the ocellaris. Now, the one really true way to tell them apart, and I don't recommend trying this, I can see, like picture it now, like staring at a tank at a local fish store, trying to count their dorsal spines. So the Percula will have 10 dorsal spines versus the Ocellaris that will have 11. All right, now that I've kind of given you a rundown between like the differences between the two. So again, these guys are very popular. They've been bred, you can, um, they can breed together and create all sorts of designer varieties. And I'm not gonna try naming them all today, but um, you know, you could just see some of the photos if you go online and Google, there's, there's tons of variety out there. Now the next one that I mentioned is the bisinculatus. They're gonna be a little bit bigger than the percula and the ocellaris. And in my experience, I feel like they tend to be a little bit more aggressive than the other two. Um, those are gonna be your uh, lightnings, your maroons. They're really, really pretty fish, but a little bit larger and more aggressive. All right. So when it comes to putting your clowns and your damsels in a tank, what size should you go with? Now, all of these fish that I've talked about today, for the most part, they're gonna stay about two to three inches, maybe a little bit larger. If you have just one of them, you could probably keep them really in a nano reef, about 20 gallons, anywhere up, you know, as large of tanks as you want to keep them in. All right. That sums up everything for the different size tanks they need and all of the different groups. Let's go talk about their diet. 
Damsels and clownfish, as you might have guessed, are omnivores, which means they're going to eat a variety of veggies and meaty foods. So I am, as usual, going to break things down into a couple of different food categories that you can buy that are commercially available. But before I get into it, I'm curious, leave a comment below and let me know what your damsels and clownfish's favorite foods are going to be. Now, I've mentioned this in some of the other videos before, um, clownfish and damsels both have relatively small mouths, so that's definitely something to keep in mind when you are selecting food for them. Let's go ahead and get into some of those dry foods. Now first off is going to be the flake foods. As you might have observed, some of your clownfish and damsels hang out towards the top and middle of the water column. And if you look at where their mouth is located, some of those clownfish even have upwards um, directed mouths, which means they're able to eat stuff on the surface without any problem. That means that those flakes are going to be a good option for those clownfish and even those damsels. Next up, you have all of your pellet foods. Now this really is just up to your preference and whatever other fish that you might have in the tank, but I encourage you to look for things that have a small size. So first off is the Reef Nutrition TDO pellets. These are relatively small. They come in a couple of different sizes. So these are a good one for your clownfish. And if you are feeding corals, you can use this for some of those larger corals as well. Next is going to be the New Life Spectrum Thera A foods. It's just a good, well-balanced, well-rounded food. Just make sure you get one with the right pellet size. I recommend about half the size of your fish's mouth. Now, the last pellet I'm gonna talk about today is the Nios Goji Berry pellet. This has some of that axaxanthin in it, which if you have a clownfish, one of those um, maroons, or any of them that have like, the darker orange and red colors, this is gonna be great it will help to pop their colors and just really enhance those bright reds and some of the darker oranges. So consider feeding this one as well. All right, moving on to the DIY foods. I've only got one today and the reason that I'm going to talk about it is this Dr. Tim's DIY food. If you have to uh, give your fish medication, this is actually a really great one to use. You can mix that medication up in the food and feed it directly to your fish. So this is definitely one that you can Sitter. Now, if you're not sure how to make the DIY foods, check out one of my other videos. I've got a full instructional um, breakdown on how to make this and some of the other gel and DIYs. Okay, let's move on to frozen foods. Now again, I'm gonna give you a warning. Make sure that you keep in mind the size of your fish's mouth, right? A lot of the prepared frozen meaty foods that are on the market are kind of geared towards those larger predators. So if you've got one of those predator uh, frozen blends, make sure that you've got some pieces in there small enough for the clowns. Now, if you're just feeding clowns, you can use something like the Reef Multi-Pack. It's got a bunch of those blister packs in there. You can pop one out. They have a lot of small pieces in there that make great for clownfish and those damsels. Another one is brine shrimp. Again, real small pieces of meaty foods, easy for them to eat. Another blister pack that you can use is the Prime Reef. Again, if you've only got a few fish, this is great for nano tanks. You can just bust out one of the little blisters and you're good to go. You don't have to thaw out a whole bunch of food. Now, lastly is the P.E. Mysis. Now, this is a little bit higher in protein and higher in fat, and it's going to be great if you are trying to get clownfish to breed. Um, that's the, those higher fat contents and those higher proteins are going to be what they need to start um, laying those eggs. Now, there's other foods out on the market. LRS has one. Um, it's called Fertility Frenzy, or it used to be called Who's Your Daddy, but that's another great one I've used personally and would recommend for um, helping to get your fish to spawn in the tank. All right, that takes care of everything diet-wise and nutrition, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the issues that your clowns and damsels might face. On to a more serious matter, we're gonna talk about some of the issues that your damsels and clownfish might face. Now, if you've spent any time reading or um, hearing people talk about clownfish, you might have heard of Brookinella or clownfish disease or even velvet. Now, those are two things that are very specific to clownfish, though other fish can catch them and can be susceptible to them. And so velvet is going to present itself almost like 
ick does, but you're probably going to see a lot more of those little white pinprick spots all over the fish. And if your fish have brucanella, you might notice them being very lethargic or um, covered in a lot of mucus or kind of like a white slime sort of thing. And if you see any of those symptoms, hopefully you're able to notice them far in advance and you can treat. Now, a lot of times the treatments for these are very, very similar. Um, I've heard people use copper, although I tend to personally stay away from copper um, just because it tends to be a lot more work for you and that you have to take the fish out of the tank. Um, I like to use freshwater dips. I think that will help a lot and it's something that I use on a regular basis. Um, if you get your fish out, you can treat with something like Quick Cure. If you've seen these videos before, you know that I'm a big fan of this stuff. Um, and also Safety Stop. Now Safety Stop is by, by Blue Life USA. I highly recommend using this before you ever put your fish in the tank and before you put them through quarantine, but you can also use it after they've been in your tank for a while if you notice them being sick. Another th common thing that you see in clownfish and in damsels as well is uranema. Now I've talked about that before. I've actually had a clownfish to get uranema and was able to survive it because I caught it fast enough and I used a combination of quick cure and this safety stop in addition to low salinity so that that will really be helpful. Now something else this is flukes. A lot of times when the damsels come in you can't necessarily see those flukes but if you put them in a freshwater bath or freshwater dip or even in the safety stop you will probably be able to see some of those flukes coming off of their body and floating around in the water column so if you are able to catch that before they go into the tank all the better. Now there are a few things that you can do preventative wise um, before your fish ever gets sick. So first off when you add your fish consider using First Defense by Dr. Tim's. It's really a great product, stress relief and immune boosting, but something that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis when you are feeding your fish is vitamins, right? So Brightwell Aquatics is probably one of my favorite, the, my favorite line of vitamins. So Vitamin M, it's a multivitamin. You can put it on their food. Um, another one that I really love, and this is really good if you've got just a small tank with clownfish. You think about when you use your food, um, a lot of times you're not able to go through that whole container of food and some of the vitamins that are naturally occurring in there might evaporate. So vitamin C is one of those things that I really recommend to put on your food, um, especially if it's been open for more than three months. This is a really good one. Another thing that you can use is um, Amino Omega. I use this on a fairly regular basis for uh, most of my fish and it is really good just adding those extra aminos to them. And this is really good too. Um, if your fish are recovering, if they've been sick, if you are trying to get them back on that path to better health, consider adding some vitamins to their diet. Now something else that you can do to ensure that your fish are living healthy lives is adding a little bit of enrichment. So enrichment is basically just any type of small change that you can do to make in their environment. If you think about fish out in the wild, on wild reefs, they're swimming around, seeing new stuff all of the time. So that is where enrichment comes in. Now with clownfish and with damsels, you can change up the flow in their tank. Think about that, like if, they're, if you've got a whole bunch of them, especially if you change up the flow pattern, it gives them a new current to swim in and around and that might make it fun. Next, as always, you can change up the type of food that you're feeding them. You know, maybe you have one type of food for, you know, the weekends and one type of food for during the week. You can change the times that you're feeding them. You can change where you're feeding them at in the tank. Now, another thing you can do, and this is very specific to clownfish, if you are trying to get them to breed and reproduce in your tank, I know a lot of people, and I've done this when I've helped to breed clownfish, is you put one of those little uh, clay pots in the tank and that will give them a place to lay those eggs and to make a nest to watch. And maybe, if you're lucky, if you're using some of the right foods, you might have some baby clownfish in your tank. 
Okay, in addition to changing up their aquascape and changing the types of food and flow that you might have in the tank, you can also change the lighting. Now, this is something that I would urge you to do with caution and only if you have a lid on your tank. A lot of times damsels and clowns are relatively jumpy fish, so they can get spooked easily if, you know, the light turns on automatically. So make sure you've got a lid on the tank, but you can, if you have a programmable light, have that light ramp up and ramp down throughout the day. Next, you can add different tank mates for your fish. Now here's a rule of thumb when it comes to clownfish. You can have one clownfish, totally fine. You can have a pair of clownfish, totally fine. Three clownfish, eh, no, don't do it. Four or more if you wanna have more than two, right? And the reason for that is if you have three, you're gonna have one of those that's going to become the dominant female of the group, and you're going to have the second one that's going to try and pair off. It's very likely that the third one member of that group is going to be beaten up and picked on almost until the point of death. So you wanna avoid having um, a little group of three, try to get at least four of those. Now, one cool thing about clownfish is that if you have a whole harem of clownfish, they're all gonna be males, right? And then you're gonna have one alpha female, and she's a lot of times gonna be a lot more larger, brighter in colors, and relatively aggressive in comparison to all those other fish in the tank. Now, if something happens to her, it's actually pretty cool. So one of those males will change sex and become the lead female of the group, and the cycle will just continue itself. So that's a pretty exciting thing to watch happen in your clownfish tank. All right, now sometimes too with those damsels, a lot of them are gonna get along really, really well, especially in community tanks and with larger groups of damsels, but just be cautious, go use Marine Depot's fish compatibility chart and see how well they will pair up with all of the other fish that you wanna put in your tank. And remember, please do not buy or add anything to your tank without doing research first. Thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed this video. See you.